Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, I'm coming to you from the UK, and today is Thursday, the 28th of March 2024. Welcome if you're joining me for the first time and welcome back if you're one of my returning viewers. I really appreciate all of you who come to watch about every week. Um, I'm recording today very quickly from my living room because essentially I am off work. My work has closed over Easter, which is really lovely of them to give us a couple of days off. And so what we did today is we celebrated our five year wedding anniversary a day early while my son is still in nursery. So I thought um, we need to pick him up in about an hour. I might use the time to record a little episode. So excuse the gardening hands. I have gardening hands because that's what I've been doing earlier today in the rain. Um, but it was either I was going to have time to make everything perfect and then there wouldn't be time to record or the other way around. So I decided I'll just show you some knitting instead. So anyways, um, before we jump in, what am I wearing? I am wearing my Winter's Beach cardigan by Andrea Maori. I knit this out of Sheepsoft by Laxton's yarns a couple of years ago. This is a British yarn and this has held up so well. I have worn this cardigan a lot over the years and I mean it has a pill every now and then but generally this this yarn just has been perfect. I love it so much. This is one of my most worn cardigan. It was really fun to knit. I want to knit another one. I think I've mentioned this. Um, it sort of looks very impressive but it isn't that complicated once you get the setup um, done because you start from the bottom and the ribbing sort of goes into the cables. But then you just, you know, you just keep doing the cables and it's a drop shoulder design, so it's quite simple. Um, about shaping to it, you don't need to add any neckline afterwards. It's, it was quite straightforward and I remember it being enjoyable, so I would like to knit it again. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. I'm sorry, I feel so out of it today. Um, I have decided to today mostly show you my finished objects because I have a couple. And then, as I mentioned, I think I'll do a sort of work-in-progress knitting vlog over the long Easter weekend. Because, like I said, I have a couple of days off. Some of them will be very busy, but at least one of those days I should be um, by myself. And I will be doing all the knitting and all the spinning. Maybe if I get lucky, Kai will take my son to Brighton for another day, which that will give me a whole day of just knitting. So we'll see what happens, but you will see my whips as I work on them then. Um, and I'll f mostly focus on my works and my finished objects today. So I have two. You haven't seen any of them as works in progress. Um, I showed you this yarn last week or the week before. This is one of my first skeins of yarns that I spun after getting back into spinning. So if you don't know, I was massively into spinning a couple of years ago very technical about it. I absolutely loved spinning. And then I I saw my Wool Maker's Bliss wheel, which I loved. Eventually during lockdown, after I had my son, bought myself a Ashford Kiwi 3, which I never really loved. But I do still have my trusty Ashford E-Spinner 3, which also I sort of didn't love. I never fell in love with it, but I do like it. So anyways, I got back into spinning um, with a passion a couple of weeks ago and this was one of the first skeins that I spun. Um, I spun a couple of skeins of yarn from fiber, like blended fiber from Fiber Hut and the fiber blend wasn't on the braid. So I don't know what it is, but it's a very wooly yarn. There's definitely 100% wool. Um, it's not a merino It and I spun it as a, did I spin it as a chain ply or a two ply? I don't even remember. All I know is it's it's a fine yarn, but because it's a sort of hardy wool and I put quite a bit of twist in it, it is a little bit rough. So what I decided to do is, because I'm spinning so much, I want to also just go through my hand spun and, and work with it to A, see what I like and I don't like, and also just to, I don't want to amass a crazy amount of hand spun, I want to work with what I spin. So I decided to knit a couple of hats. And for this one, because it was a little bit rustic, I decided to hold it with my leftover mohair scrap. So I had a, I think 10 grams of 
a sort of dark burgundy mohair from Isaiah, which is my favorite kind of mohair. So I used that up, but as you can tell, I've run out, so then I just switched to a sort of lighter pink mohair, and I made myself a pink uh, burgundy hat. And yeah, I was debating whether I should make it sort of a double brim, but I often like these hats when you don't fold them over, um, because otherwise I just end up endlessly fidgeting with the brim. So yeah, I just made this sort of like a single hat. I mean, you could fold it up if you really wanted to. I know some people wear their hats quite short, but I, if I want a, a folded up brim, I want the hat to be really, really long, but you could wear it like that. Um, not sure if I'm going to keep it. I think I'm just gonna whip up a couple of hats and I want to go through my hat collection as well, because I do like having a lot of hats. I wear them a lot in winter and it's fun to pick a different one each day. But I also want, I think I want to get rid of a couple and then I'll see, this may go into the gift box, this may stay with me, I haven't decided yet, but I do like the color and I think it works really well with the mohair and it's just a one by one ripped hat, there is no pattern, but there are a million patterns if you need one. And then I just did some swirly increases, uh, decreases and with the mohair it had turned out quite soft. I think I used a four millimeter needle. I could have possibly gone up a needle size or two. This is quite dense, but because I'm not going to be rolling it up, I think it'll be really nice. But it's definitely one of my heavier hats, so it'll be nice and warm and cozy. So that is one finished object, and I do really like the color, actually. Um, and this is how much I have left. This is just gonna go back into stash, and one day I can do like a stash buster or something. Um, so that is finished object number one. And then finished object number two is really cute. I finally littered my son a toy. I have crocheted him, um, Emma the Bunny years and years ago because I thought crocheting him a toy would be faster and I hated it. But finally I've given him, I asked him what kind of toy would he like me to knit. And his first idea was a lion, which was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure. That sounds like a faffy thing to do. Um, then he decided tiger. I'm like, no, do something easy. So then finally he decided he wants a cat and a dog. And I hate cats. So I decided to make him a dog. Um, so this is out of Susan B. Anderson's Wrap Me Up Toys collection. Um, because I know Susan B. Anderson, she has beautiful, beautiful sort of stuffy patterns and I've heard that they are really foolproof and there's no seaming, like you just attach everything as you go, which really appealed to me. So the wrap me up toys, I think there's a cat, a dog, a, is it a lamb and a pig? The pig is really cute. So of course my son wants all of them now, but we decided to start with the dog. And because the one in the picture was yellow, my son wanted the same. Um, so let's actually unwrap him so you can see him. So it's a yellow dog. I follow the instructions to a T. I'm not sure. His bum seems very long. He looks longer. Even though I measured everything and I counted the rows, um, he's a bit longer than the pictures look. But I think it's, he's really cute. I really like him. So you start at the back. Um, it's all knitted in one piece and then you just end it onto it like the ears and the little legs and tail and considering I am not an embroiderer I, I think his, his face turned out pretty well I'm pretty happy with it it's very cute um, and the light does keep changing because today is just like sunshine and rainbows and downpours every 10 minutes um, I use some yarn out of stash, which I didn't like, so this is great. Uh, this was a perfect yarn for it. Um, this is a lamb's wool and a nylon blend. Um, it's Ching Fibers Fjord. And it's a weird base that she sold at some point. I love all her beautiful hand-dyed, sort of very high-end yarns. And for, I think, very, just a very short time, she sold this sort of lamb's wool nylon blend that was commercially spun and dyed. It was very affordable, and the colors are beautiful. But somehow I don't really like working with it and I have quite a lot of it so I made my son a hat out of a different yellow actually a couple of years ago and I held a double for this and it turned out I think it turned out be uh, beautifully and it's really it's really lovely and soft um 
it I think it's the perfect yarn for this um I used some black alpaca um, yarn that I had left over for the face and I stuffed it with just some cotton wool that we had at home I didn't want to use yarn ends because I think it would have become very very heavy um but yeah this is just perfectly squishy and then all the animals come with a blanket um but I didn't go I think they have four different blanket patterns but I just did a go to stitch blanket um I did go with the width that Susan suggests and of course my son wanted a rainbow blanket because his favorite color is red and rainbow so we went with a rainbow this is actually the West Yorkshire Spinners color lab that I used to make him some gloves for a nursery and he still has those so this is going to match his nursery gloves and what you do is you make a little thingy here which I just improvised I think there was a different way to do it but I just used the end and crocheted a little hook and I was going to put a button on it but in the end I just went with what the pattern said and make this little bobble and then you can very satisfyingly you can wrap him up and it's very cute so this took me I think all of last Saturday and then on Sunday ended the little blanket and he loves this little guy so maybe I, I'm not sure I'd rather I think I would I, I would rather knit him something else than one of the other wrap me up toys because they're essentially all the same except for some minor details but it is it is very cute look at it so yeah that was a surprise little thing to knit but yeah I've been feeling because I think I've, I've been working on so many garments and I just felt like some little projects to work out quickly, do something differently. And this, both of these, they worked out perfectly. I will say that with this pattern, this is written for DPNs. So the entire thing was sort of set up to be worked on, I think, three DPNs as well. And I don't like working with, I guess it's four, but you have um, the stitches spread out onto three DPNs. If anything, I want them to be on four DPNs. But also I don't really do DPNs anymore and I didn't have the right needle size so I had to I just put in some stitch markers and did it on magic loop which worked but just something to look out for it wasn't complicated at all um, the pattern was quite clear it took me a second to figure out where to place all the ears and everything but it was reasonably clear um, so I would recommend it just be on the lookout um, if you are a DPN knitter, this will be perfect, and if not, you can... It's not even modifying it, it's just sort of figuring out how to place the stitches, because the instructions will tell you, do this for needle one, and needle two, and needle three. But it wasn't difficult at all. So, yeah, those are my two finished objects for the week. Sorry, I have... I'm still battling with my cough. Um, I had tonsillitis a couple of weeks ago and yeah, so I just got myself some cold tea. Um, should we do whips or should we do spinning? Let's do whips first. Um, I didn't get everything like I said, I just very quickly wanted to show you my lento. Just because last week you couldn't really see anything. Um, and I'm dropping everything everywhere. So this is the Lento by Yona Hietala, um, originally a liner pattern, but you can buy it as a single pattern now. Um, this is my fourth, I think. And now you can actually see the thing. It's a very, very weird color, but I, I really like it. I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, I am doing my usual. I am doing size two. I'm not even swatching because the pattern is written for fingering weight and Mohair, in this case, I'm even using the same fingering weight yarn that I used for my first lentil. And my first one turned out perfectly, so I'm just doing exactly the same. I use 5mm for the body, 3.75 for the rib, um, size 2. And I'm using um, one strand of Knit Picks palette. This is still my first 50 gram ball, so you can see. You get very far with one ball. And I'm also still on my first ball of mohair. Um, this is Rico mohair that I bought in Germany. It's just a mohair silk. Um, and I think it makes a really beautiful color. It's 
In the beginning, I was wondering if it's too grey, but it is definitely like purple. Um, it's very subtle. It's sort of multi uh, multicolored, colored, and I think it's very, very pretty. And this is going to be perfect for like a simple work outfit. And I just wear these um, lentils so much. Um, yeah, so I'm on the body. I split for the sleeves. Um, I always stop a little bit early on the lentil for the sleeve stitches. So for the last couple of rows, I only increased on the body because I want the body to be oversized, but I don't want huge sleeves. Um, so yeah, this is where we are with that. Um, essentially, I just need to find the other balls of yarn and then I can just zip along on this. I haven't worked on it very much. Um, but yeah, that is my lentil. And then another thing that I've made quite significant progress on is these socks. So these are my Hedgehog Fiber Socks. The color is a very, very old club colorway called Sitting Pretty in their sock base. And I think it's really pretty. Um, as I said, I haven't really bought much Hedgehog Fiber yarn in my life. But I was part of some of their clubs for a while, or I would get like random grab bags. So I have a lot of very random colorways, but I love their sock base. It's my favorite sock base out there. And I don't know why I don't knit with it more, because I love the socks and they wear forever and ever for me. They wear really well, despite being 90% uh, merino, I think. So anyways, one sock is done. I'm just doing a three by one rib sock and there's my postie. Let's see if they come to me or not. No, I don't think they are. Um, and this is what I did on the train on Tuesday and today as we had a day out today. Um, so yeah, quite good progress considering I love socks and I haven't really been on the sock wagon for a while. I I want to knit more socks, but I haven't been loving it as much as I usually do recently. Sorry, I panicked because I am sitting in our living room and the street facing window is right there and my neighbor walked past and he's lovely, but he's also quite nosy. So I did. I was a bit awkward. Anyways, sock knitting is happening. I want to cast on some more socks. More of my knitting plans in a later segment of this episode. But yeah, just very briefly wanted to show you these socks, which have been mainly, mainly train knitting and meeting knitting and all of that. All right, let's do spinning and then I'll talk a bit more about my knitting plans and weekend plans and house and all of that. So spinning, I have spun some more yarn and I am, I am obsessed. I, I lost one mini that I meant to show you, but I have been buying some fiber from Spin Jones who makes beautiful sort of art bats and all of these things here in the UK. And I have fallen in love again with woolen spinning. So if you don't know, worsted is, you have a worsted and woolen fiber prep. So worsted you typically spin from a braid where all the fibers are already going the same way. And then you spin short forward draw, maybe short backward draw, and you sort of, again, flatten the fibers to make a very, like, straight yarn, if that makes any sense. Um, which is usually quite strong, it's a little bit shiny, and the opposite of that is a woolen spun yarn, which a woolen prep would be a bat or Rolex, um, so the fibers are going all different ways, and then you spin it a long backwards draw and you don't flatten the fibers as you go, which means it tends to be a bit more inconsistent just because you don't, you know, perfectly align every little strand but it makes a much airier and fluffier yarn. And I personally think they're very beautiful yarns. Um, I always find long draw a little bit hard because you have to let go of your inner perfectionist. Um, I tend to be very good at spinning very even, you know, short forward draw, worsted yarns. But with the woolen spun, it, it you know, it just, you know, it, it's a little bit more bumpy and you just sort of have to let go. And obviously a lot of it is practice as well. But I'm just em embracing it. So I spun from a bat. Um, first I did a little test spin because I got a little tiny little, I was a 10 gram, 7 gram mini bat, which was really cute. So I tested it. I did a woolen long draw two ply and I loved it. So I then decided to go and dig into my 100 gram sort of massive bat. That was just like a massive ball of fluff essentially. 
um, and this is what we've made. So what I did is I divided the batch by two. So I stripped it lengthwise and it was sort of, it wasn't a gradient, but it, it did go from sort of like brown and pinks to green. So I decided to also spin it in that order. Um, so what we have here will make more sense once I have caked it all up and I will do that very soon. This has not been washed because if I washed it, I couldn't show it to you today. Um, I spun two bobbins, I started with the green and then spun all the way to the brown um, and I was really really excited to ply and then I got home from a long work day in London on Tuesday and I shouldn't have done anything but I was like, I'm gonna do some spinning because spinning has been very much my relaxation method recently. So I went upstairs and started applying it and then halfway through applying it I realized that I hadn't spun all of the brown and pink for one of the bobbins which was so stupid but actually I think it turned out really beautifully because it meant that the, the fibers they didn't line up perfectly which makes an even better gradient so now it fades even more um so it worked out perfectly so this is a two ply and it is a fingering weight, if not light fingering weight. So this skein is 80 grams and 355 meters of a woolen spun two ply. Um, this is the green that I had left on one bobbin, so I two ply that as well. And then I still have more of the brown and pink fluff to spin up if I want to. I'm not sure if I want to. I might just keep it and do something else with it one day. But once I cake this up, it's going to be a beautiful gradient. And my idea for this is to, uh, to make a muscle bra hat. I've made a couple. None of them fit me particularly well. I think I make them too big. So that's the only sort of hesitation I have. But I think this would be a perfect muscle bra. Because um, if you don't know, it's a pattern by Isolde Teague. Um, you can knit it basically with any gauge. It's a top-down hat. That you then fold into itself so if I make this a gradient hat depending on which way I wear it it can be either like a green hat or a brown hat or I can fold it up it'll be quite pretty um, and I just want to experiment more with this kind of spinning because this is not something I used to do a lot and I'm actually I'm, I don't want to say I don't want to show off but I am very proud of how this has turned out because of the woolen spinning this is so fluffy and I find sometimes hand spinning because you spin by hand the yarn tends to be denser than store-bought yarn and it tends to be a bit harder on the hands when you knit with it and that was definitely the case with this whereas this feels really beautiful so I want to knit it up immediately and see how it knits up but I have high hopes for this and this hasn't even been washed yet so once I've washed it it'll relax a little bit as well and you can see it has a tiny bit of a halo. This is a merino and silk blend, I should have said. But yeah, I am very, very excited about this. Sorry, I keep having to take breaks to cough, um, but we are almost at the end. Um, what I did want to show you is I got some new yarn for a particular project, so I thought I'd show that off very quickly. Um, I have been wanting to try Sandness Tin Pear Gint for a long time. So if you don't know, Sandness, which is a Norwegian yarn brand, they have been making Pear Gint, which is, I think, a decay weight woolen yarn for a long time. I think it's one of like the staples. I think it's been around for decades. And they recently, I mean, they discontinued Tove and brought this in as their replacement. And I would argue they're not the same because Tove is a woolen spun, whereas I reckon this is more of a worst it's spun but don't know that's the way it is i have a yellow sweater quantity of their tova which was their previous sort of fingering weight uh 100 wool yarn in stash and i should knit with it i bought it when i was pregnant which was a long time ago so i should probably knit it up but i have been wanting to try this for a long time and i think for a long time in the uk you could only get it in like a cream or natural colorway but recently, and this may have been around for a while, but I noticed the other day that you can now buy this in a ton of different shades from Oxford Yarn Store and possibly different places. I am not sponsored, I'm just telling you what I found. 
and I fell in love with this. It looks a bit orange. It is, I would argue it's more like an orangey red. It's definitely not traffic cone orange. It's definitely more on the red side. But I fell in love with it. And I think it's because Petite Knit has some kind of, is it the cumulus top or something? She has one orangey red top that I think looks really good. So I thought I might go for a really bright color. I have been feeling like the need for for brights this spring, like spring and summer. I just want something classic but bright. And I think if I make this into a sort of very simple garment, this could actually be a really good, even for work, like good work top slash light jumper. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm so here for the color. This is color number 3819, which I think was called Spicy Orange or Orange Spice. I think Spicy Orange. Um, this is at 205 meters per 50 grams. And I got myself a sweater quantity. I got six balls to most likely make myself another Anchors sweater because I tend to just make the things that work for me again and again. And yeah, I think something very simple will actually look best with this very bright color. Um, yeah, so I wanted to show that to you. Um, let's see if we can make it look less orange. No, this is the West Yorkshire Spinners that I use for my son's dog's blanket. Um, and this is a true red. Yeah, so you can see it's not far off. So yeah, quite excited about this. And so this is one of my knitting plans. Might not happen immediately. Maybe I might even take that away on holiday when we go away in about is it four or five weeks time. But this is in the works. And otherwise, I just wanted to chat a little bit about my knitting plans. And this will sort of lead into what I'm planning to film over this weekend. Because I'm planning to film a more sort of a vlog style video again. I'm not sure if it's going to be a series, so I might upload a short video every day. Or if I'm going to wait and then cut it all together. I haven't decided yet. I did something similar in, I think, November last year. When I had like a knitting weekend to myself. And I know some of you really like that. So it's going to be like that. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to check my notes and sort of see where I'm at with my whips. I mean, I have an idea. Um, I know I have my linen quilt sweater, I have my lento, I have my mini muck neck tee, which I've worked a little bit on. And I have my pair of socks. I think those are my active whips. I'm not sure if I mentioned that I ripped out my Kori in poncho, so that doesn't exist anymore. I ripped that out a couple of weeks ago. And I want to knit a couple of small projects. I definitely want to do some cast-ons. Um, so I think I'm going to sit down later. I have my smart little notebook here with all of my whips. And I'm going to work through what I have on the needles, what I want to do, what I sort of want to focus on. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to cast this on over the weekend. I think this needs to sit for a little bit longer. But I have some ideas. Um... We also have a couple of birthdays coming up. I have a friend who is pregnant, so I could do some baby knits. I'm not sure if I feel like it. Um, so yeah, that is something that I'm thinking about. I have another cabled sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl, Sophie. I think, is it called the Sea View? Maybe I'm making it up. She brought out a beautiful cabled sweater a couple of weeks ago, and I bought that. I want to do that um very soon but i just i just want to knit so many things i also want to knit the cushions by laura penrose i i want to knit everything uh, my, my queue is endless so i need to work through all of the things that i've screenshotted and saved and patterns that i purchased and make a decision on what i need to cast on now versus what i might cast on further down the line what might be good holiday knitting and so on so yeah, I think that's what I'm going to, to, to do later today. I just knew there's not going to be a podcast with my son running around. So podcast first, knitting plans later, and then hopefully I can take you over this weekend um, and make something fun. I was thinking if you have any questions for me, you can feel free to put them in the comments and maybe I can answer some of those as well. 
And yeah, otherwise I really hope that I will get lots of knitting and spinning time. My spinning wheel, because I just finished this. I just finished plying this like an hour ago. So my spinning wheel is empty as well. So we're going to start lots of new projects and I am here for it. In other news, which are not knitting related, so if that's not for you, that's fine. I will talk to you soon. If you do want to stick around, in other news, um, we have been doing a fair bit on the house. First up, we finally put down more turf. I had been wanting to put down more turf since basically we did a bit last year when we moved in, but I always wanted more because we had a huge sort of tiled terrace and the tiles weren't in great shape either. <coughs> And finally, Kai gave in and was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So we did um, that. And when I say we did that, Kai did most of like the hard lifting and getting out the tiles and all of that. I did more of the planning and telling him what to do. But it's happened. So we've done a fair bit of gardening. And that meant that we had to fix our pipe because we had a pipe burst, like an out outdoors pipe. We had one per uh, burst when it was really cold, obviously. We should have turned it off, we didn't. Um, we didn't know this was our first winter in our house because we moved in in February last year. Um, so we had that fixed. We had people around yesterday to pick up like massive slabs of piles and rocks and all the things that we can't get rid of because we don't drive and how would we? Um, yeah, we've just had lots of like tiny things happen on the house and then today in the pouring rain I did some gardening because I ordered some plants, I ordered some flocks and when they arrived I was like yeah they just need to go in the garden immediately and luckily now, because of course we put down the turf, didn't have any means of watering it um, except for like with a tiny little um, watering can and it always rains in the UK except when we lay turf. Now that we have a pipe fixed, it's been um, raining endlessly, so, <laughs> of course, uh, but there you go. So we've been doing a bit of like house and garden stuff, and I think I mentioned last week that we are doing up our roof terrace. Um, originally, I wasn't going to do any gardening up there because there's already too many plants to water. But now I'm thinking, if I put like tomato plants and stuff up there, I probably have less problems with like the snails and all the pests, so maybe, let me know if you're in the UK and you have done like balcony gardening and any of that, I'm assuming it might be better than having it on the ground. Let me know. I'm thinking about it, but also there are so many things that need to happen already. Our life is quite busy, so I'm anxious or quite conscious of what I am getting myself into, especially again, because we're going away for two weeks in the end of April. So I don't want to put in lots of work and then just have everything die. And I also don't necessarily want to make my poor friends come around for like gardening and planting stuff unless it's absolutely necessary. So yeah, that's uh, what's happening. And then, like I said, today we celebrated, we pre-celebrated our five year wedding anniversary because um, tomorrow we are going to a four year um, birthday party, which is not going to be the sort of celebration I enjoy for my wedding anniversary, but we're doing that tomorrow. And then just, you know, like the typical Easter hunt activities and stuff over the weekend. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So sorry, I feel like it's been a little bit interrupted today, but we have gotten an episode filmed, um, which will be up later today, I hope. As for usual, let me know what you're knitting or crafting or crocheting, whatever you're doing. I'm always interested to hear. If you have any questions, do put them below. I will only say I don't do tutorials, so I just don't have the setup for it. So if you have sort of tutorial requests, then the answer will most likely be no. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let me know what you're up to. And thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope wherever you are in the world that you are being healthy and safe and have lots of nice yarn to play with. And I will talk to you very soon. If you celebrate Easter, have a lovely holiday. Otherwise, just hopefully have some nice days off and I will talk to you soon. Bye.